Level zero. It begins with silence, no flash, no sound, just tension, static tension. High above, in the belly of a cloud, particles collide, ice crystals grind, water droplets swirl, charges begin to separate. The upper part of the cloud becomes positively charged, the base turns negative, and between them, a field, a crackling imbalance like a muscle tensed for too long. This is where lightning begins, not in the strike, but in the charge. It's invisible, undetectable by eye, but it sets the stage for everything that follows. Before a single bolt reaches the ground, trillions of electrons are gathering, pushing, testing the insulating power of the air. This is level zero. The storm hasn't struck yet, but the sky's electric muscles are flexing, and something's about to break. Level 1 Lightning flashes, but it doesn't strike the Earth. It lives inside the cloud, dancing where no one sees. This is intracloud lightning, or IC, the most common type of lightning on Earth and the most overlooked. It forms when the positively charged top of a cloud meets its negatively charged base. The bolt doesn't go down, it goes across. A jagged pulse of electricity slicing through the cloud's internal layers. From the ground, it looks like a flicker. A sudden brightening, like a light bulb being turned on behind thick curtains. But inside, that bolt can span 10 kilometers or more, longer than a city block of sky. It's not silent. The air explodes from the heat. Temperatures spike to 30,000 degrees Celsius. But the thunder is muffled, distant, like a rumble through a pillow. Icy lightning rarely touches ground. But it signals something bigger. The cloud is charged and the balance is failing. This is the heartbeat before the strike. If you see lightning but don't hear thunder, you're likely witnessing intracloud flashes. But don't let silence fool you. Cloud-to-ground strikes often follow within minutes. Take shelter. Level 2 Now lightning jumps from one cloud to another. This is cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning, CC. It's rarer than intracloud but far more dramatic. Two storm cells, both electrically active, drift near each other. Each carries its own storm scale tensions, and when those fields overlap, boom, a bolt leaps from one cloud to the next. From below, it streaks sideways across the sky, long, flat, wide like a glowing crack between dimensions. These bolts can span 50, even 100 kilometers. They look slow, but they're moving at 220 million kilometers per hour. They don't strike the ground, but that doesn't make them safe. Airplanes have been struck mid-flight by double sea bolts. Radio towers have recorded long-range discharges dancing above them, even while dry air lingers below. Sometimes, these bolts pass between different storm layers, upper anvil to lower cumulus. It's not just a flash, it's a bridge between weather systems. And when clouds start reaching out to each other like this, it means the storm is scaling up. Lightning seen stretching across the sky likely isn't headed for the ground, but double sea bolts signal extreme storm organization. If you spot them, know that more violent strikes may follow. Stay alert. Level 3 This is the one people fear. The bolt from the cloud to the ground. Cloud to ground lightning, CG, is the classic lightning strike, jagged, blinding, deadly. But its path, it doesn't start from the cloud, not really. It starts with a stepped leader, an invisible, branching reach of negative charge that descends in segments like a phantom stairway. As it nears the ground, objects, trees, poles, buildings, you, throw up their own invisible streamers, begging for contact. When they connect, the return stroke fires back up at nearly the speed of light, and that's the part we see, the flash that sears into our eyes and rattles our bones. Cloud-to-ground strikes typically carry 100 million volts and peak currents of 30,000 amps. Temperatures surge higher than the surface of the sun. It only lasts microseconds, but it's enough to blow bark off trees, shatter concrete, stop a heart. Most CG lightning is negative, traveling from the bottom of the cloud downward. It accounts for about 25% of all lightning strikes, but almost all direct injuries and deaths. This is the one that hits open fields the one that arcs through metal fences, the one that turns umbrellas into lightning rods. You can't predict the bolt, but you can predict the danger. If thunder follows lightning in less than 30 seconds, you're within striking distance. 
Follow the 30-30 rule. Seek shelter if the time between lightning and thunder is under 30 seconds and wait 30 minutes after the last rumble before going back outside. Level 4 Now the strike gets rarer and far more dangerous. This is positive cloud-to-ground lightning, the monster cousin of the typical strike. It doesn't come from the cloud's base. It comes from the top, the positively charged upper layer of a thundercloud, sometimes 15 kilometers up. Because it travels farther to reach the ground, it builds more energy. Instead of 100 million volts, these bolts can carry over a billion volts. Instead of 30,000 amps, they can exceed 300,000 amps. They strike more than 20 kilometers from the storm, sometimes under clear blue skies, what people call a bolt from the blue. They last longer, they are hotter, they are louder, they are more likely to cause wildfires, fatalities, and massive power disruptions. Positive lightning is responsible for many of the worst lightning disasters. It ignites oil refineries, it damages aircraft electronics, it triggers power station explosions, and it doesn't need to strike during the storm's peak. It often comes after the main storm has passed. People think it's over, and that's when the bolt hits. Positive lightning can strike more than 20 kilometers from a storm, even when skies are clear above. If you hear thunder at all, take shelter. You're not safe until long after the last cloud has faded. Level 5 Some lightning doesn't fall. It rises. Ground to cloud lightning flips the script. Instead of a leader descending from a cloud, the charge launches upward from something tall. A radio tower, a mountain peak, a skyscraper hungry for contact. Here's how it works. When the electric field near the ground becomes strong enough, say, during a storm overhead, tall objects become electrically primed. If the cloud's charge is right, an upward leader forms from the tip of that object, racing into the sky at hundreds of thousands of kilometers per hour. It's rare in nature, but it happens. And when it does, it creates a reverse lightning bolt, sometimes forming the first connection in a larger discharge system. Airports record these from antenna arrays. Lightning research labs even use rockets with trailing wires to trigger these events, studying them in controlled bursts. They look like needles stabbing into a cloud's belly, bright, straight, and fast. Sometimes the upward leader triggers more cloud discharges. Sometimes it ends alone. Don't be fooled. Even though the bolt starts from the ground, it's still violent, still explosive, still deadly. Ground-to-cloud strikes often begin from tall structures. During any storm, stay away from towers, wind turbines, or tall trees. They may be first to launch a bolt skyward. Level 6 Now the sky scribbles. Forked lightning is the visual chaos most people imagine. A single bolt, but split, branched, cracked like broken glass. It happens when the stepped leader doesn't follow one clean path. Instead, it fractures through air like roots seeking water, tracing multiple potential routes toward the ground or another cloud. What you see is one bolt with jagged arms flickering in random directions. But in reality, only one fork carries the full return stroke. The others are false paths abandoned by the charge like roads not taken. Some forks hit the ground, some don't. But they all tell a story. The air was indecisive, unstable, overloaded. Forked lightning is often seen in cloud-to-ground events, especially in humid or mountainous environments. The extra moisture and elevation shift the electric field, encouraging path-splitting behavior. It's beautiful and dangerous, because when lightning branches, it widens its reach. One bolt has many chances to strike. The more humid and uneven the terrain, the greater the chance of forked lightning. When storms roll in near valleys or forests, take shelter fast. Branch strikes may land far from the storm's core. Level 7 What if a bolt didn't strike once, but again and again and again? This is ribbon lightning, a visual echo of repeated strikes in the same place, slightly offset by wind. Here's how it happens. A bolt strikes, then it strikes again along nearly the same path, milliseconds later, but high winds push the cloud slightly between strokes, causing the flash to shift just enough to form a visual ribbon across the sky. It looks like stacked bolts, layered in parallel, each one a photocopy of the last, sliding sideways like a strobe in a storm. 
Ribbon Lightning is a multi-stroke discharge, a series of rapid-fire bolts following the same ionized channel. Instead of one big burst, the storm is pulsing its charge in rhythmic spasms. Sometimes the ribbon is only two strokes. Other times, it's five or six strung together like electric train tracks. You'll see it best at night with a long camera exposure, but even the naked eye can catch the flickering repeat. And for tall buildings or antennas, these repeated strikes can overwhelm surge protection systems, damaging electronics not once, but several times in seconds. Ribbon lightning means wind and instability are mixing with multi-strike activity. If you're near mountains or flat plains during high windstorms, unplug sensitive electronics. Even surge protectors can fail under repeated hits. Level 8 Lightning doesn't always leave clean scars. Sometimes it falls apart, piece by piece. This is bead lightning, the dying stage of a bolt as it breaks into glowing fragments. You won't always see it, it's fast, but when the ionized channel of air cools unevenly after a strike, parts of it can stay illuminated just a fraction longer, creating a dotted string of fire across the sky. It looks like glowing beads sliding down a thread, a bolt that didn't quite fade together but fractured on its way out. Bead lightning is not a different kind of strike. It's a different way of ending one. Usually, the channel cools evenly, but dust, humidity, or uneven terrain can disrupt the rate of recombination, leaving hot spots along the bolt. These beads last less than a second, but they hint at the bolt's history, where it moved faster, where it held the most energy, where it gave up last. Some researchers believe bead lightning may hint at plasma instabilities, tiny pockets of magnetic turbulence inside the strike. Others think it's just a visual artifact, like the ghosting on an old TV screen. Either way, it's haunting, a dotted trail of destruction, each bead a micro-explosion. If you spot bead lightning, it's already over, but it often follows a particularly strong CG or positive strike. Treat it as a warning. That storm is electrically violent. Stay sheltered until long after the last thunderclap. Level 9 Now the sky breaks its own rules. This is ball lightning, mysterious, silent, and possibly unreal. It's been reported for centuries. A glowing orb, floating mid-air, size of a grapefruit, color of plasma. It appears after a strike, drifts, bobs, sometimes explodes with a bang, then vanishes. But here's the twist. No one's captured it reliably on camera. No experiment has reproduced it exactly. Some physicists believe it's real plasma formed from silicon vapor and oxygen. Others think it's an optical illusion, light bouncing through the eyes during a strike. But the reports are eerily consistent. Inside planes, ball lightning has been seen floating down aisles. On fields, it's been observed moving against the wind. In labs, small orbs have formed under specific microwave bursts for milliseconds. Some scientists think it's a mix of chemistry, humidity, and electromagnetic fields. Others say we're chasing a ghost, but whether real or misread, the effect is unnerving. A ball of light that seems to think hovering after a storm like a leftover thought. While ball lightning is rare and poorly understood, treat it like a live electrical hazard. Never approach floating lights during or after a storm. Whether plasma or not, you don't want to test it. Level 10 This isn't lightning as you know it. This is lightning that reaches space. Gigantic jets and sprites are massive discharges that erupt from the tops of thunderclouds, not toward the Earth, but upward into the atmosphere. Start with gigantic jets. They launch from the storm's anvil and pierce into the ionosphere over 80 kilometers up. They look like tree roots drawn in reverse, branching upward in crimson and blue tendrils. These aren't fantasy. They've been caught on camera from mountaintops, weather balloons, even the International Space Station. Some carry more than 1,000 times the energy of normal CG bolts. They rise instead of fall, flipping gravity's script on lightning. Then there are sprites, luminous flashes of red and blue light triggered by extremely powerful lightning below. They last milliseconds, but when they appear, they light up dozens of kilometers of atmosphere. They're not bolts, they're glows, jellyfish-like flickers with tendrils hundreds of kilometers long. Sprites, jets, and similar phenomena form what's called transient luminous events, T 
TLEs, Lightning's High Altitude Relatives. They don't hit the ground, but they mess with satellite signals. They mess with your mind, and if you ever see one, know this. That storm didn't just touch your world, it touched the sky's ceiling. You can't outrun lightning, but you can outsmart it. Know the signs, read the sky, and if the clouds start talking in light, it's time to listen and tap the bell so the next strike doesn't catch you off guard. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.